a little bit of a background because some people in my Instagram uh, are not aware of what is happening and I'm trying to carry everybody along. Now, this constitutional force majeure has repudiated what we now, what we know as the fraudulent 1999 constitution. By virtue of this declaration, that constitution ceases to exist. So if, every, if we in the Alliance territories uh, have, have called for this constitutional force majeure and it's already established, and we are calling for po political parties within the Alliance to close shop, which will bring us closer to the final step in regaining our freedom from this imposition of a union called Nigeria. If we are all speaking with one voice and we are united in our cause, then why does it appear that there are others within this alliance still clamoring for 2020 elections and presidency in, the 20, in 2023? This is what we're discussing today. These are more are the questions on, on the minds of many within the Lower Niger Territory and the other blocks of the Ninas Alliance. With me today are three very important and distinguished guests whom I will bring in on in a few minutes for a roundtable discussion where we will dive deep into the nitty gritty and the nooks and the crannies of this very important subject. So please stay with us. Thank you again for joining us. This is Voli Media and we will begin shortly. Okay. We are live on Facebook. I just want to let you guys know on Voli Media Facebook page, we are live. We are also live on, uh, on YouTube and we are live on the Zoom link, if you got the Zoom link. And I am also live on my Instagram at I am a Kuche. We are also streaming to you live. So there are so many options. Okay. Now, I'm gonna introduce my first guest. I have the pleasure of having live on this program, Dr. Chukwemeka Iranya. Dr. Chukwemeka, is an engineer specializing in pipeline oil and gas. He is based in the United States and he is a member of NINAS and a signatory to the Constitutional Force Majeure. I also have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Tony Nadi, who is the Secretary General of the Lower Niger Congress and a co convener of NINAS. And third and not the least, I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Oludayo Shokumbi, who is a PhD scholar a 5G antenna engineer, a public speaker, and a life coach. I want to welcome you all from wherever you're joining us all over the world. Thank you for joining us today on Voli Media. Is, are my guests here? Producer, can you please cut to, I'm going to start today with, uh, with Dr. Irania. I'm going to start with him. Um, if you are there, Dr. Irania, please unmute yourself. And while that is being, but while that is happening, I just want to say that since it's no longer breaking news that the 1999 fraudulent constitution is the source of all the problems of unitary Nigeria that we're facing as a as what that we're facing, such as regions not having controls over their resources, the ability for the regions to generate electricity, the ports, security, and all of that. We all now know that the 1999, the the defunct fraudulent 1999 constitution is the source of all these problems, hence the declaration of, uh, uh, of the constitutional force majeure in December. Since the now repudiated constitution is skewed in the favor of the North, right? According to section 134, subsection two, then why are minorities, why are we hearing people like Mualu and Tinubu not closing shop and joining the Alliance? Why are we still hearing them still preaching this one Nigeria upon us? That is where we're going to take this off from. And I would like to introduce again, uh, Dr. Dr. Iranya to please come and shed a little bit more light on why this seems to be. Dr. Iranya, if you can please unmute yourself and go ahead. Thank you very much myself. And uh, it's my pleasure to be on this platform. And I thank everybody uh, for finding time to be here. Um, I got your question. The problem is mainly on basic understanding of what is responsible for the keeping of a union. 
How is a union established? What is that? What is, what is that thing that establishes a union? What is that thing that makes a country to be a country or a nation to be a nation? Yeah. It's only one document, and that document is called the Constitution. Our people, many of them, even those who studied law and those who claim to be uh, leaders and political uh, stakeholders, they do this basic fact mm. that the Constitution is the document that affects every aspect of our lives, both okay. private and public. If only, if only we can understand this basic fact that you cannot move an inch without having the constitution dictating and directing your movement. The, consti the constitution is the say it all and be it all in a country. I wish our people can understand this. Because if they do, they will now understand that the Constitution is what affects what we do and what we don't do in a country. Let me go for that. I, 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 I will stop it. Let me, let me round up with this. First of all, there has to be a Constitution. Secondly, the Constitution now dictates the rules and the regulations, that's inside that constitution is where the rules and regulations are, are established. And the rules and regulations include how we govern ourselves. And if it is a constitutional democracy, which is what we are all aspiring to, do, to be, to become, that constitution determines or dictates the way we ascend to power, how we get to power. So, and that is why that is very important. And let me round up with this finally before probably go to the next question. Constitution is what dictates, it is the constitution that finally establishes what is called a union. If there is no constitution, there is no union. Every, if, if this, this is one of the things that I want the, everybody who will be uh, who is here to take away. With. If there is no constitution, there is no union. It is the constitution that establishes the union. That is why when a constitution is being made is made by those who want to unite, who want to form the union. And these are the indigenous peoples. That is people with an S behind it. The indigenous peoples, they come together and agree, first of all, to be in a union. Then, after agreeing, they now write the rules and regulations. So the question I want to ask, or I'm throwing out there before you take over, when, where, and how did we uh, come together to form the union as being lied about in the of the 1999 constitution? Let me stop here so far. Thank you very much, Dr. Iraya, for that very uh, insightful uh, contribution. I, everybody knows by now, right, that um, the preamble of that constitution, where it came to say, we the people, that was the first lie, because we the people never came together, we never made a document, we never sat down to decide and put our signature to our enslavement, right? So where I, I really want us to focus this on is, is more people that are still going forward uh, and talking about 2023 elections, when we know we know that 
every time, every four years when we go to an election, it renews the life of a constitution, the same constitution that is holding us slaves in our ancestral land. Now, people like Mualu, uh, Mugalu, that is a young, he, he's younger in terms of uh, uh, the people that we have seen come to power, the, the Tinubus and the Buharis and the, the, the likes. Now, they, 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 he's coming with this, oh, I, I can make, I can help, I can turn things around, I can do. My question to you, Dr. Irania, is the constitution says, right? I, I'm not a constitution scholar, but from what I understand in section 134, subsection two, is that the, the, it talks about elections and it is skewed in the favor of the North. So how can someone uh, from, from a minority, right? Somebody who is not in the, from the North, how can that person indeed get the, the, the required votes that, it, that is needed if, and this is where I draw the line, if they are not working for the North, if they are not part of the caliphate, this same uh, section of Nigeria that are committed to wiping the rest of us out, that are committed to committing ethnic cleansing. We are seeing everything going on with the headsmen. We are seeing everything going on with uh, uh, Boko Haram, ISWAP and all of that. Uh, can we, can, is there anything you can say to that light? Because a lot of our young people are confused. A lot of our young people are, are asking, especially within the Alliance territories, because again, the youth, are always the people that they use. The youth are the, are the tools that they use when they are going towards these elections. When they, are go when they, start, they, they start to you, you know, uh, publicize their intentions of running and all of that. I know currently that uh, King Simualu is on this, this uh, uh, rampage of recruiting youths and telling them that he's their messiah and he's gonna change things around. How can you change something? Under what constitution are we talking about? Under what constitution? So let me let you, you, you get coming again, Dr. Irania. Please give us, share, because there are a lot of youth that are watching here, they are watching this program, they are the ones that they will give the monies to, they are the ones that they will mobilize. But according, you know, we had this uh, 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 thing that happened last year, the whole world was aware, the NSAS movement, where it looked like the scales had finally fallen from our eyes. And there was a slogan that I picked up from there where it says, our mumu don't reach. Our mumu don't reach. So this youth, on one hand, right, they know something is wrong. They want to be a part of the, a system that changes that, hence the, 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 the um, success of the NSAS, where it was all over the place, and the, the illicit federal government had no other choice but to uh, uh, kill unarmed, it, it, unarmed uh, peaceful protesters. So these youth, again, are being, you know, they are being uh, targeted right? It, it, they're being targeted by people like Mualu, people coming forward to say that, oh, we can help, we can change this country. How can you do that? Under what constitution are we talking about? Mr. Uh, Dr. Rania, uh, uh, please take it away. Thank you very much. Let me, let me answer your question in two parts. Part, okay. The first part is, for people like Kingsley Mualu, either he is ignorant or he is intentionally deceptive. Oh. Let me repeat that. It is either Chris Limoralo and his likes are ignorant or they are intentionally cunning. Oh. Why do I say so? One, you, you mentioned it already, but let me, let me that, that, that takes me to the second part. And I am addressing the youth right now and every other person watching this program. First of all, we did not make this 1999 constitution. It is a fraud. Number one is that constitution is made by the people, not by uh, the military. Number two is that anywhere in the world you can go to, that has a properly made constitution. A constitution is always 100% of the time activated by a referendum. In other words, after writing it, after everything, crossing the T's and dotting the I's, you will now bring it out to a vote of yes or no. 
have, you have to take one of those two options. The entire citizen, the entire population will vote yes or no, we approve, or we hereby activate, or we support, or no, we don't support. At the end of the day, the vote will be tallied. If the yes majority, then the constitution becomes active. The 1999 constitution was never, ever subjected to a referendum. So that is that. And that is what I want the youth and everybody to know. The constitution is a fraud and it was not activated by a referendum. Now, going straight into your question, ladies and gentlemen watching this program, the Nigerian constitution is divided in the fraudulent 1999 constitution is divided into three parts. You have the reference, you have the, sorry, the preamble, the main body, and then the schedule. The main body is called the section. It has 320 sections and it's subdivided into eight chapters. Now, section number 134, please write it down if you're watching me. Okay. Section number 134 is the section that do, talks about how to. Uh, how to declare somebody a winner of a presidential election, especially where you have two or more candidates. In, in subsection two, that is section 134, subsection two of that fraudulent constitution stated that if you have two or more candidates, that you declare somebody a winner under three conditions, mm -hmm. three conditions. Condition number one, the person must score 25% of the vote cast, not registered voter to those who really voted that day, that the person must score 25% of it in the federal capital territory, Abuja. Mm -hmm. 25% in federal capital territory, Abuja, that's number one. Number two, the person must score 25% of the vote in 24 states. Remember, by breeding, the military created 36 states. That's right. Out of the four regions that okay. we agreed, we agreed on three regions going to independence, then a fourth region was created in 1963. Again, by plebiscite and referendum. Now, the military came in and balkanized everything and created states here and there to the number two of 36. Condition number two is saying that the person to be declared a winner must have 25% of the vote cast. I hope people will, will listen to me carefully. I know there's a difference between registered voters and the vote cast. They are not the same. The vote cast, that's what I'm talking about. That is the people that actually voted on that day. 25% of them in 24 states. That's condition number two. The third and final condition is that for somebody to be declared a winner of the presidential election, the person will now have the overall highest number of votes. That is, if they count, if they count all the votes, but the one he didn't get 25% of, or the one he got above 25%, and the one he got exactly 25%, everything added up, everything added up, that person will have the highest number of votes. So three different conditions must be met before somebody will be declared the winner of a presidential uh, uh, election. So going into your question, somebody like Kingsley Mwagalo, how can he, how can Kingsley in his right senses, thinking that he will meet up all these conditions. How can he, for goodness sake, why is it that somebody cannot just stand up and tell himself the truth? Now, let me go further to say that in section three, 
of this fraudulent constitution. That is where the number of states we are, list, we are, we are, we are listed. The number of states, if you go to section three, subsection one, you will see where they listed the number of states. There are 36 of them. Now, if you go to schedule one, you will see where the states and the local government areas were listed as well. Let me shock our viewer, our uh, every people watching out with this information. Look at this. This is the number of polling units, that's voting centers, that INEC has, uh, has prepared. When you look at this, I don't know how close people can see this. Yes, we can see it, Dr. Rania. We can see it properly. Yes, yes. When you look at it, you can see the north is it comprises all this, the blue, this one, this one, this one, and even this one here. The uh -huh. south is only this uh, purple here, this yellow, uh -huh. and this green uh, the 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 yellow the west side. So at the end of the day. When you look at this map, when you look at this polling unit, you are telling me that KC Moralo is, is not it is not deceiving people. KC Moralo is telling me that considering this polling unit, this polling unit, that KC Moralo is going to win a presidential election in Nigeria under section 134, subsection 2. Now, let us go further and say that the election itself is based on so-called population. Yes. Now, look at the north, a place filled with desert. They concocted something in 19, I think it was 1954, the, the, the population they did. Since yes. that and the British, they have confessed that they actually manipulated it to uh, favor the North. And since that time till today, the population has always been made to be larger in the North, a desert region. This is the first time in history, in geography, that you have more population in the North with desert than in the mangrove swamp. That is number one. Number two, Sister Kuche, let me shock you with this information. Oh. Anything you are doing in Nigeria, any form you are filling in Nigeria, even to open a bank account, you are going to enter a column of it called state of origin. Oh. Whether you are employment, whether you are applying for anything at all, driver's license, whatever it is, there is a set of it called state of origin. Do you know that the population census form is the only form in Nigeria without state of origin? Hmm. I need to write that down. I never knew that. <laughs> yes. The reason being that when the population census is carried out and people fill in state of origin, you know what that means? It's a simple uh, data sort in, in, in Excel, if you have a spreadsheet. You, you, you highlight by data, and then you sort. You can sort by state of origin. And in that situation, you now know the two people who come from somewhere. And they said that the Aousa Fulani, the, the Caliphate Fulani, they, they insisted that they will not, there will not be anything like state of origin in the sense of form. So that when they say Kano has 10 million, it means that everybody at that 10 million people belong to Kano state. Okay. Mm. And when you go to section 162, subsection 1 of the fraudulent constitution, you will see where it talks about sharing of money from the federation account. There are three conditions to share money from the foundation account. Condition number one is the population of that state. Condition number two is the number of local government areas in that state. Condition number three is the size, how big a map that state is. These are the three conditions for sharing uh, uh, money that comes into the foundation account. So a very simple example, Bayesa produces oil. 
the money is sold and put into the federation account mm. by about eight or nine local governments. They are definitely less than two million. And their area or uh, the, 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 yes. the, the geographical area is not big. Yes. Thank so you, Dr. Let me just give an example that 10 million naira or 10 million dollars was realized in sales of oil and it is put and that 10 million came from oil located in, in Biafra State. And mm -hmm. that one is put into the federation account. When it comes to sharing that 10 million dollars, that Bayesa will have the same amount with Kano State that yes. has 10 population mm -hmm. the government and like five times the size of Bayesa. No way. Yes. So you see, these people are forward looking. That's why mm -hmm. they make sure that the population census doesn't have. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And yes. before then, they have created more local government area for themselves. Mm -hmm. In, in, in uh, in uh, uh, section three, uh, subsection two, and schedule one, part one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Iran. Yes, thank you, Dr. Iran, for that very, very um, in-depth analysis. Uh, I'm, we're, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, producer, if you're ready, let us just take a quick commercial break. And then once we are back, we will bring on Mr. Tony Nadi to give us some more insights into where we are heading. Uh, in the Alliance territory, especially geared towards the youth. Thank you guys so much for joining us. My name is Akuche and this is Voli Media. We'll be right back. Producer, are you ready for us with that commercial? Okay. Just on a short commercial break. All right, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are watching this all around the world. This is Voli Media and I am your host for tonight's program. My name is Akuche and I have three, the, the pleasure of having three very distinguished guests in the, on the program tonight. Uh, we're discussing 2023 elections and the agents of the caliphate. How does this affect us in the lower Niger region? Um, how do we get our youth to, to be aware of 
of of these kind of um plans by the uh, by the other side trying to get us to go to elections when we know that every four years when we do go to elections renews the life of the uh constitution which has already been repudiated um producer if you are here if you can hear me can you I just want to confirm that we have the Mr. Tony Nadi in the house. Uh, Mr. Tony Nadi, if you're here, can you please unmute your microphone? Yes, um, I'm here. Oh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you right. so much. Um, we do understand how busy that how busy you are in the fight for our freedom. We have a. Right. Uh, I have some questions that I want to ask you. It's actually in, in three parts, but I want to start with what are the implications for us as emerging nations if we do go to 2023 elections in spite of the constitutional force majeure already in place? What are the implications of that? Right. The constitutional force majeure itself is uh, a declaration of emergency, a declaration of a union dispute intended uh, to, to wind up the union of death that Nigeria has become for its constituents. And anybody, I want the young people to listen carefully. Anybody who is telling you he wants restructuring or reconstruction or rule of law or all those things that the, that the political parties can promise you. But who also wants to go to election one more time under this constitution that has been shown to be a fraud, that has been shown to be the source of all of what has gone wrong with Nigeria, is just being dishonest, being disingenuous. Because you cannot approbate and reprobate. If you want an end, to the misery that has become the lot of Nigerians trapped in Nigeria at this time under this constitution that is worse than apartheid constitution. And I say that advisedly, I say that having thought carefully through it, what we have in 1999 constitution of Nigeria is far worse than apartheid. Because in South Africa, during apartheid, the Boers, who are at least developing a society. I tell you, there was rule of law amongst the whites. The blacks were not being accommodated, but I, they, 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 there was, there was a, infrastructure was being developed. Schools were producing you know, people with skills. Healthcare system was available for those who were entitled. And all kinds, they, as London was being built, Johannesburg was being built. Pretoria was like all the capitals. The Boers were just trying to establish the kind of society they had, you know, on the other side of the Atlantic in this uh, new found land, <laughs> more or less. But in Nigeria, the Fulani and their British uh, sponsors, they are not developing anything because they refuse to, to, to go to school. They, they say Western education is an uh, abomination. Mm -hmm. So, we, we have people who have rejected knowledge leading us with ignorance. And so for a country of 200 million people, we're still talking about 3,000 and 5,000 megawatts of electricity. We, 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 we see you know, mediocrity that is uh, being elevated to uh, you know, uh, uh, the standard that we must all pursue. In fact, if you have knowledge and they find out, if you're in the federal ministry, in any of the federal ministries, in any of the federal agencies, if you have knowledge, you were an endangered species. They are going to throw you out. Mm. Falsehood is preferred to truth and all of that. So that constitution is responsible for all of that. And then every four years, we go and renew the life of it. And once more, we have been invited to go to renew the life of that constitution. That is what the election does. That's all about the election. Yes. Now, let's bring it down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. let, us, let, us, let us realize that all of what we complain about in Nigeria, whether it's corruption or the killings going on everywhere, or the infrastructure that is in decay, 
or the quota system that has a, that has shut down opportunities. Young people running from Nigeria in all directions. Some are prepared to cross the desert trekking. They are, they, are, they are slaves in China. They are slaves in Europe, everywhere they go. They are running away from their home country. And so everything that has gone wrong with Nigeria, the elections that are never right, the, 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 the impunity we see, everything is flowing from that constitution. And we can go to the specifics in terms of the sector and which, unless that constitution is taken down, each of those things will remain. The insecurity we see, the corruption we see, the lack of infrastructure we see, the lack of equal opportunity we see, and all of that. All of them are flowing from specific sections of that constitution. Mr. Tony, I'm that gonna we... jump in. Mr. Tony, sorry, I'm just gonna jump in there for, for a second. For, yes. for, the, for the benefit of the youth, that are watching yes. and they're the ones that are being targeted. They're the ones yes. that are being used as an instrument to go forward into this 2023 elections by, by, uh, by saying, by lying to them and saying that, oh, that be, we need a younger person. If a younger person comes into power, that is what is going to change. Some people ask, what about this constitution is bad? What I know you just touched on that, but I, you know, I want us to focus on a few of them. Uh, I, I tell people the reason we don't have electricity is because it's in the 68, there's a 68 item exclusive list, like, uh, executive exclusive list or something like that. You know, I'm not a federal exclusive list, right? Uh, you are here, you are professional. Can you list some key areas in that exclusive list that are responsible? for everything we're going in on, that's going on now in Nigeria so that the youth can hear that it doesn't matter if it's an elderly man, if it's a, if it's a Pope, if whoever it is, as long as that person is coming in under this 1999 constitution, fraudulent, de de reputated constitution, this cannot change. Can we please hone in on that? Thank you so much. Right, right. Uh, what 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 I was what I was laying out is that everything everything we complain about and we can go to the specifics. Okay. We don't have electricity, and we're not going to have electricity as long as electricity generation and transmission is in that exclusive list. Exclusive list means only the federal government can do this, and okay. that's the reason we don't have it. If if that. If electricity generation and transmission is removed from the from that exclusive list today, in six <laughs> months, in six months, all of those who have capacity to produce electricity will begin to produce electricity on a scale that can quadruple what we have already. In another one year, we can be discussing 30,000, 40,000 megawatts of electricity. Mm. But as long as that electricity generation and transmission remains in that exclusive list, such that only the federal government can generate electricity and give to everybody, we remain where we are. As it is for electricity, so it is for petroleum products. Mm. Every time they go to another increment, they're just mm -hmm. contemplating one now, if not for NSAS that might resume. Of course, uh, they, they already said that petroleum uh, products, uh, you know, that fuel is landing at 300 and something thousand, uh, 300 mm. and something naira for one liter. The only reason we have, to, we are paying 10 times what we should be paying for fuel is that refineries are not exclusive list. As long as that constitution stands, prices of petroleum products will go up every time. And if we remove, if that item is removed from the exclusive list, I tell you, there are, there are 1 million you know, options for processing crude and making it available to everybody. The corruption we're talking about, the corruption we're talking about, that same constitution, you know, uh, uh, puts in place things that enable it. Mm. The, 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 the matter of infrastructure, all of the roads that connect, you see the, how the roads in the country, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, the railways, the ports, the airports that are not there, Again, that exclusive list is responsible. The elections that never go right. Elections to federal and state offices, 
president, governor, senator, house of assembly, are all on that exclusively so that only INEC in Abuja can conduct election to all the offices. And so, no matter what you vote, no matter what you try to do, it is who they want that become your governor, yeah. your president, your votes don't count in mm -hmm. this circumstance. But the worst of it, the matter of security, arms and ammunition, I want everybody to listen carefully. Arms and ammunition are on that. In fact, that's the first item <laughs> on the exclusive list. Those arms and ammunition means that only the federal government can touch guns and uh, yes. bullets such that no matter how terrible things become in the states and around the country, the governors cannot license you for one rifle. No governor in Nigeria, because some people say, oh, let's set up a vigilante. Let us set up a state security apparatus. By which weapon, by which mm. gun are you, are the governors going to enforce or, or, or equip those who are being set up as vigilante? So it is a matter of ignorance. It's a matter of not knowing for people to think that, oh, governor is chief security officer. He's not doing enough. The governor mm. does not have the authority okay. under this constitution okay. to license okay. one rifle, one rifle. And what is that vigilante that will be waiting for henchmen be using? So when they go to Asaba, the governors, when they go to Asaba to declare that they're going to ban open grazing, mm -hmm. those who are coming with the cows have AK-47. The governors cannot license even a pistol. If anybody is found with any pistol that is given to him by the governor, that person carrying that pistol can be shot to death by the Nigerian security you know, operatives. Yes. If it is a rifle, you can be shot from half a mile for being found with a rifle that Nigerian federal government did not give to you. So no matter what you plan, no matter how complex it is, no matter how much you desire, you cannot find any answer to insecurity as long as that constitution is standing. Because those who the federal government of Nigeria is now in the hands of the Fulani. Mm. They have the, the, the Federation of Nigeria was hijacked by the federal government of Nigeria. The Fulani has hijacked that federal government. And so across all the agencies that bear arms, whether you talk about the police or the army or the immigration or the customs or civil defense or even prisons, Every NIA, all the agencies that carry arms in Nigeria are in the exclusive control of the Fulani. Because the federal government, which has been hijacked by the Fulani, is in exclusive control under this constitution of all those arms. You see how it connects. So yes. no matter where you are in Nigeria, all the guns to be used in your community, somebody that is Fulani is in charge of how they have to be used. So if, if bandits or henchmen or Boko Haram or any of the numerous mutations turn up in your community, there is nobody that is from that state, including your governor, that is able to, on his own authority as governor, get guns to give to you to defend yourself. So as long as that constitution is there, you are just waiting for your turn to be killed. And that's why we say, if insecurity is flowing from that constitution, if mm -hmm. infrastructural decay is flowing from that constitution, if corruption is flowing from that constitution, why do you go to renew the life of that constitution? Because the only comparison we can find for it is the apartheid constitution of South Africa, in which the Boers were the owners of the land, having confiscated it from the original owners, the Blacks. And imagine at the time, Mandela, Oliver Tambo, Governor Mbeki, Walter Sisulu were working hard. Imagine in the 80s, 85, 88, 89, that people who had been struggling to topple the apartheid constitutional order, the union of master and servant, now come across black people who have been you know, uh, who have been persuaded by the Boers 
to come and become part of how to manage the apartheid constitution, to come and contest the election so that the apartheid constitution could survive. That is what Kingsley Mogalo and all of those who are inviting people, young people to come to renew the life of that constitution in 2023 are doing. The 1999 constitution is the source of the misery, the source of the death. Let anybody, let us ask those who are inviting us to 2023 election. By what constitution will the winner govern? By what constitution will the winner govern? Because whatever happens, whether it's the PDP that wins or APC that wins or Africa that wins or Young People's Party that wins, everything we have in that constitution will remain in place because the winner will have to swear to mm. govern, uphold and defend, to govern by, uphold and defend the 1999 constitution. He can't take office if he has not taken yes. that oath. And yes. once he takes that oath, the 36 states we have, which is, which is the upside position from the federation we're supposed to be, remain. Yes. All of those things that ensure corruption, all of those things that ensure the killings that are happening to us, all of those things that ensure the infrastructural decay, all of those things that ensure the quota system and the mediocrity that are taken center stage will remain in place. So ask, let the young people ask Kingsley Mogalo, by what constitution will you govern if you win? Let him tell them how he's going to turn the 36 states into the four regions we have. Let him tell them how he's going to uh, you know, enable electricity generation and transmission. Let him tell them how he's going to enable the construction, the, the, the infrastructural development that is being impeded by that exclusive list. Let him tell them what he's going to do about the false claim that we, the people, submitted ourselves into this misery, into this union of death. If he does not answer, they should stop him wherever they see him. If they see anything coming from his party mm -hmm. and all the other political parties, let anybody not tell you that it is young people coming. They are, yeah. they are taking advantage of the ignorance that they've planted among the young people. They think, you can remember while we were going to 2019, we had gone about mobilizing young people into realizing that the reason they are in their situation is that that constitution is the way it is. They were coming along. Suddenly, somebody introduced a bill they called the uh, not too young to run kind of thing. And somehow they managed, among all the you know, burning issues, they managed to rewrite it through the National Assembly. It became law. It became something that the president had to sign. They took it to him, he signed it. And young people were called up to say, oh, yeah, you see, you are the one with the knowledge. Go and make yourself available, take power, and repair the country. The young people thought they were telling them the truth. 91 political parties, did I say? 91 political parties were registered. And these young people, not knowing that they were being hoodwinked, went about trying to get funds. Everybody had one political platform or the other to you know, go to get a form. Some wanted to go to House of Assembly, others wanted to get to the Federal House, and all of that, just to take them away from the road to salvation into the road to perdition. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the elections came. Was it not between PDP and APC that everything happened? Where were the rest of the 89 political parties? APGA that was supposed to be even the third in the hierarchy did not present a candidate because the controllers of APGA had gone to submit themselves to some uh, APC and it was just a scam that not too young to run. These young people, we challenged them Nina's challenges them. The LNC is prepared. The media in Nigeria, the media from everywhere in the world, we challenge you to bring those people who are talking about 2023 election under the constitution that ensures death, that ensures backwardness, that ensures calamity for everybody. We challenge you to bring them to the stage so that we can have a debate with them on what they are going to be able to do in the face of that constitution 
to turn around the things that are happening to Nigerians. Nigeria is one concern. Nigerians are another concern. Mm -hmm. Those who are saying, those who want to save the Nigerian Union are prepared to sacrifice the Nigerians that are trapped in that union of debt. As long as this constitution is in place, it is a union of debt. And we're saying the matter is quite simple. This constitution is responsible for everything. And that we challenge them, anything that is your complaint in Nigeria, we will point to you the section of the constitution that is responsible for it. For which, right. if that constitution does not go down, it remains in, for all times. Thank That's, you, Mr. Everything Thank flows you. from the constitution. Yes. Only, only by elections is the life of that constitution renewed every four years. That's the second point. Third point, yes. only political parties contest elections. And therefore, no matter what anybody is doing, all of the political parties subscribe to that constitution. That's why they contest elections under it. In which case, every anybody that wins, whether it's PDP or Abga or Young Party, Young People's Party, mm -hmm. will have to swear to That's govern true. by that constitution. So that you are back true. to where you started. No matter okay. what else they tell you in between, going around and they are lying to you. Yes. Okay, Mr. Tony, we're going to just leave it there for now. Thank you so much for that. The second, because we're running out of time, and I really want us to hit all these points uh, before before we go. Uh, if there are yeah. people, if there are members of the uh, the people that are watching us wherever you are all around the world, if you have some questions, please raise your hand on the Zoom. If you're part of the Zoom uh, meeting, you can raise your hand, and we will take one or two questions. If you're watching me on my Instagram live as well, and you have some questions, please feel free to uh, put it on there as well. Um, and then where you're watching us from Facebook, again, all over the social media platforms. Feel free to drop a, a, a question or a comment and, and we might be able to take one or two. Another question uh, quickly, Mr. Tony, that we have. Yeah. Now we know the youth, he has specifically spoken to us and he has told us the reason why we don't have light. We can't generate electricity. I remember when we were growing up, we used to insult Nepa people a lot. Sometimes you see the people in our areas, they will take uh, uh, sticks and stones and the Nepa man climbs up the pole and they're waiting for them to come down and all of that. We shout, you know, God punish Nepa and all of It's not Nepa. Nepa is not the problem. Nepa is not your problem. The 1999 constitution, it's the problem because the uh, generation of electricity is on that exclusive list uh, federal exclusive leave that we're talking about so we cannot generate electricity so the, the moment we start to you know break this down and let people know we go to the grassroots the market women uh, everyone to say you don't we don't have light because this is the problem and and all of that and we, mr tony uh doc, even dr rania has honed in on those points so very quickly mr uh, mr tony nadi what can we do as members of the Lower Niger Congress and, and Nina's Alliance to ensure that this does not happen. What do I mean by this? 2023 does not happen. What can we do? Address us as yeah. the youth. What can we do? Please, just a few minutes on this question. Thank you. Your, the, the future of the youth in Nigeria has been mortgaged by all of those who are inviting the youth to another round of election to renew the constitution that make them slaves in their lands. And so their own responsibility, every one young person who can read and write should please find a way, get on the, with the website of Nina's or Lower Niger Congress, that is www.ninasffn.org. Ninas, ffn.org or www.lowernigercongress.org. Get on it, read that proclamation of December 16th. So you can see exactly what we are asking you to do. The political parties, from that five point logic of this constitution is responsible for all your woes, only political parties contest elections. All the political parties subscribe to that constitution. Whoever wins is going to have to swear to govern and defend, govern by and defend that constitution. To that extent, 
if you want to get out, if you want to get out of the union of debt, out of, out of the misery you are trapped in now under that constitution in this country, the thing to do is to stop the political parties from dragging us to a renewal round, another round of renewal in 2023. And I tell us, if we, if we refuse to do that, those who impose that constitution, and that is where we come back to this map, yes. the people from the, the caliphate, the Fulani, and their Kanuri Kampotapas and uh, the British sponsors. They are, we, the constitution by which they are holding us hostage has been defeated. The only chance they have now is to throw power to us, Tinubu candidate or some mm -hmm. Mogalu candidate in the East, the Igbo mm -hmm. and the Yoruba to go and start fighting over who will be president under the constitution that give the full and 72% of everything that Nigeria owns. 72% of everything that's on the table, whether it's the money that is being shared in Abuja or the power to vote in the National Assembly over any issue or the power to anything at all that is of benefit available in Nigeria, the full and own it 72% under the constitution they impose. And so we have challenged that constitution, we have repudiated that constitution and they're trying to save the life of that country because the union that they, that is, that they think is their, belongs to them is being done away with. And so their last, their last breath is whether they take us to election in 2023 to infuse life back to that constitution. But yes. if, we want to, if we want to escape into safety, if we, must, we owe it a duty right now to stop the journey to 2023. Mm. The young people of Nigeria, if you want life, if you don't want death, stop all of those who are inviting you to elections in 2023. Let the political parties close shop. Whether they are PDP or APC or APGA or Young People's Party, they are all the same because they subscribe to the apartheid constitution 99 which guarantees your death, guarantees your misery, guarantees everything terrible that you complain about now. Whether it's NSAS or electoral malfeasance, everything you've complained about, corruption. If you want to go to 2023 election, you are saying it's okay to come to kill us some more. You are saying it's okay for infrastructure to remain the way it is. You are saying it's okay for corruption to grow the way it's growing. That is what the young people can do now. If they do not do it, if they do not do it, those who are holding this country together under that constitution are going to get to their doorstep with AK-47. If you do not want to fight your cousin who is inviting you to come and vote for him or your niece who wants to be president, you have to get ready to contend with full and knee Hesmen, bandits, Boko Haram, whatever they call themselves, when they get to your doorstep with AK-47, they're only trying to buy some more time to yes. continue their onslaught. Okay. If you want to leave, stop the journey to 2023 inside, not boycott, inside 2021. If yes. by the close of July, if by the close of July, the young people in Nigeria have not stopped the voyage to 2023, then they are preparing to get killed. That's what okay. it is. Thank you, Mr. Tony, for that. Uh, my final question, please, uh, two minutes on this. How right. do we have gotten people come to ask me between now and 2023 with the carnage that's going on with you know the insecurity that's happening all around the country, how do we protect ourselves within our territories against any violence uh, or bribery if we do decide to stand our ground, how do we do that as the youth? By, by, the, by the proclamation of December 16, 2020, the 1999 constitution under which Nigeria is convened and governed, two items. If anybody wants to understand what we're saying, go to the preamble. Call up the 1999 Constitution on the net. Just Google it down. 
get to the preamble and see the claim that we, the people, submitted ourselves to all of this. And therefore, we made the constitution. Everything inside that constitution takes its bearing from that claim that we, the people, agreed to be in 36 states. We, the people, agreed to be in this union. We, the people, agreed that the, oh, that the, that the people in government house will have the spare key to the treasury. We, the people, agree that they will have blanket immunity. We can't question them where they're stealing, whether they kill people. And yeah. so that claim applies to everything we're complaining about. The Niger Delta, that preamble translates to we, the job, we, the Ogoni, we, the Ishekiri, agree that our oil and gas should belong to Jigawa because that is what that exclusive list that puts oil and gas means. So mm -hmm. if that, that preamble applies to every single provision in that constitution. If it is quota system, we are saying that we, the people, agree that the worst amongst us should be in charge of our lives, that those who have excellence should be put behind, and those who bring mediocrity should be put in charge. So in all of that, we are saying that it is, it is a choice to be made now that we tell ourselves that we can't continue like this. Okay. We can't continue yeah. like this. And so yes. the action we need to take is to say, all of those who are inviting us to election are inviting us to renew our damnation under that constitution, and we will not accept to do that. And it is the political parties, since they are the only ones who contest elections, not the candidates, like yes. we saw in the Amici case. The political parties are the ones that contest elections. The political parties are the ones we have to, whatever we have to do with them, whether it is boxing or wrestling or any kind of altercation, we must stop them now. We must yeah. tell them they can't continue to pretend they're going to do anything differently from what the constitution stipulates because they can't do anything outside what the constitution. Yeah. You saw how many times Buhari quoted the constitution for us. He says, acting within the constitution. If he appoints all the Fulani to everywhere, he says, acting within the constitution. You saw when Malami told the governor in Ondo that the people who are in their forest are entitled under that constitution to, you know, so yeah. that constitution is the enabler of everything. Yeah. And yes. it is within our reach as the mm -hmm. owners of the sovereignty to stop the renewal of the life of that constitution. Thank if you we so don't much. do it, so. we're just inviting more of what we're seeing now. Everything right. else is a lie. That's right. Thank you so much, Mr. Tony. Mr. Tony Nadi, we're gonna leave it there for now. We do have our third guest. He is a youth, uh, a prominent youth in our society as well. And uh, uh, Mr. Olu Oludayo uh, Shokumbi, I want you to come on please and talk to you, the, the youth you know, from our own eyes, from our own perspective as the future of Nigeria. If you can please come on and speak to us about our call to action, what should that be? Because if you remember during the NSARS, there were a lot of, uh, when everything, you know, went, uh, you know, the way it did, went array, there, was a, there were a lot of people that came together to say that the reason why NSARS wasn't as successful as it sh could have been was because we didn't have a plan was because there wasn't really like an agenda. Like we didn't really demand things, you know, credible things that we could run with, right? So at this point, we're coming again, the, the, you know, there's the agitations all over the place and there are people, you know, people that are coming out to say, either they want to be a Yoruba nation or they want to be a, a donation or, you know, we are, we here, are, we're, we're fighting for our self-determination uh, in our ancestral life. What should our message be collectively? If we're going on the streets, if we're going out for a peaceful protest, protest or for, or for rallies, you know, and we're saying, the youth are saying, we've had enough. Because again, all over social media, everywhere you see it, people are saying, ah, well, Mumu don't reach. What are we doing? What should be our collective message right now, right? If, if, well, this is not answers. This is what we're not going to 2023 elections. This is, you know, this is our call to action. But there might be other ones. What should we, how should we put it together? So, Olutayo, if you can please unmute yourself. And if you are here, 
for the next uh, few minutes, please, because I have one or two questions and we're actually running uh, out of time. I have one or two questions uh, here on social media that I would like to for us to answer. If you are there, please unmute yourself and if you can just uh, talk to us a little bit about what our call to action should be moving forward. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can you guys hear me? Thank yes, you very we can. Much. Thank um, you for being here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Akuche. Thank you, Dr. Tony Nandi. Thank you very much. Um, well, um, going by what's happening now, uh, the only thing I can tell every youth is to first download the one 1999 constitution and read. Because, you know, um, the problem with the youth, I'm also a youth, <laughs> is that most of us, we, only, we always flow with wherever we can get something that we, we put in our mouth. Mm. An, average youth does, an average youth does not understand the Nigerian constitution. An average youth does not understand how Nigeria works. An average youth just wants to find what, just want to fulfill immediate gratification and then move forward. Um, I have the opportunity to be sending a lot of, I post a lot of um, opportunities on social media about admission and scholarships abroad for students and for people in Nigeria. And I do a lot of stuff for people, but I discovered that even with the information I share for free, people don't read. Mm. That's the point. So, so the problem, it, it, it's a big issue because you cannot convince someone that Nigeria needs restructuring if he doesn't understand what exactly the problem is. You see, most of the youth, most of my friends, let me just dive this in. Um, I did my master's degree in Saudi Arabia. I'm a Christian, but I did my master's in Saudi because that was where I got my scholarship. So, so I met a lot of Northern friends. Um, I stayed all my life in Lagos, so I don't know about North until I saw one or two of my friends. And whenever we discuss politics in cafeteria, they always tell me, they say, don't disturb yourself. This country has been ruled, um, with, this country is structured in a way that we did not, we continue to rule forever. I looked at him, I said, what? Mm. He said, he said that I'm, I'm not saying that it is good, but that is the way we met it. He told me. He said, as much as I'm not, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it, that's the way I met it. Mm. The way Nigeria is structured is, is very simple. The North will continue to rule while the South continue with their exploration, the education and all of it. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 that's the way it is. If not, it's not in support of anything. It's almost impossible for anyone to become something important in Nigeria. I looked at him. I said, what? He said, mm. yes, he said, as much as, he said, I am learning. That's why I know that this is not bad. This is not supposed to be. But fortunately, there's little, that there's little to what I can do. You know, so an average northerner, and that's why I always tell you, you don't need to hate anybody. Anybody listening to me, please, do not hate anyone. It is not anybody. We should blame people who cause this uh, false my, 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 my merger, that, like you said. So everybody will just ride on what he or she is. And average Nigerians just want to be okay. So the first thing, like you said, um, the call to action is let everybody understand what is in the constitution. Is there a way we can do it? I mean, if everybody understands what the problem is, everybody will find a solution automatically. That's the point. Because if you convince somebody that 2023 election should not hold, the person will just look at you. I'm a youth guy. What are you talking about? What do you do? Why, why do you mean, what do you mean that 2023 election should not, oh, that's the constitution of Nigeria. Ask the person, what are the components of the constitution of Nigeria? Um, the person does not know. Mm. Yeah, so recently I've been reading about the constitution of Nigeria and I'm seeing a lot of things. Um, as Dr. Clifford is saying, as um, the Mr. Tony too is talking, the constitution is right here with me. The preamble you are talking about, let me read it. We, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity and harmony as one indivisible and indissolvable sovereign nation under God, dedicated to the promotion. I just look at everything. I say, Shea, so Mr. Day inside this thing. I signed this thing. <laughs> 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 you know, so, you know, so I just look at it. When I say the we is big. So mm. it means that, it means that, it means that either I'm aware of the issue or not, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm under it. I'm, I've signed it. Yes. My generation has signed it. Yes. You know, yes. so um, so when, when we look at the when we look at it mm -hmm. holistically, we'll see that there's absolutely nothing anybody can do to make any change until we fight the root of the problem. 
But unfortunately, <laughs> an average Nigerian is looking for what to eat now. So he does not even think of all these things you are talking about. He will tell you that, guy, now because you don't chop, now person will chop, go to read the constitution. You know, so, so that's exactly that's exactly my major edit. I've been to educate people to know exactly what they should do. Look at what just happened from uh, a few days about the Twitter ban. I mm. it affected those of us that are usually to tweet about scholarship abroad because many people could not even get access to what we post again. Yes. You know, and unfortunately, people were saying, I'm sure everybody, everybody can everybody saw the thing. They said we're giving 1,000 to support Buhari. I was so ashamed. Very mm. young, vibrant. It's not their fault. Mm -hmm. Because those those guys, well, some of them are looking for what to eat, so mm -hmm. it's a big problem, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. if people, if we are if we are determined to force to everybody should know the root of the problem. Because let me just tell you, I'm a Yoruba person. From what everybody has said, let me let me pick up biases. My first bias, like anybody could think, if he doesn't understand what you guys are discussing, is that mm -hmm. these guys these guys have an ulterior motive. That's what mm -hmm. they will tell you. They will say this guy, uh, these guys have material motive. How would they say that we should cancel the constitution of Nigeria? What do they mean? You know, because they don't understand what you are saying. Yes. And yes. because most of the names here, I can see a lot of evil people. They will say they are so indirectly for doing their own faction. Yes. You see, you, you, can you see the biases now? So I'm so, talking as an average youth, but because I understand, right. I wouldn't think this way. Mm -hmm. So orientation is a big problem in Nigeria as a whole. If we can find a way to sensitize people on how to even understand what the problem is. I think the problem is absolved. Let because me quickly come in there. Uh, okay. Dara, sorry to cut you. Let me quickly come in there. So the way, with everything you just explained, which is you know really, really, really uh, insightful. What if, is, did, you see, did you hear how I broke it down the first time? When for me, all these years growing up, I, I thought Nepal was our problem, right? You will yeah. see a Nepal man and somebody will run and say, oh, Nepal is coming. People have released their dogs to, to bite Nepal people. People have done all manner of things to Nepal people. They've, some of them have you know, been attacked in, in horrible ways because we thought, I, including myself, I was ignorant of the fact that I thought the problem is with Nepal. People have gone and burnt Nepal offices because they think Nepal is the problem. But now we know better. If we to go to the you know, average Nigerian, average youth that doesn't understand, they don't have the time to go and be reading constitution and all of that. But maybe we just focus on, for example, the 68 item exclusive list. Yeah. Focus on that. We may not even need to take all of them. We can just take yeah. one or two or three, the ones that really yeah. affect us. To say, yeah. for example, NEPA. We don't have NEPA in Nigeria. We cannot generate electricity in Lagos states yeah. because it is the, the federal government you know controls the the power to do that exclusively so yeah. even if it's a, a state like enugu who produces coal can generate electricity for themselves they cannot yeah. because the federal government controls that so what if we do if we can break it down that way right that this is the re this don't you think that that might you know go a little bit further than uh, uh, you know some to you know with some of these people that uh, some of our youth that don't really understand instead of going and breaking down the whole constitution that's one secondly i saw somewhere online you know how we always say uh, you know we too they like to catch crews for this country some people say ah no we know that these politicians are, are, are you know this and that they will we will take their money but we will still not vote for them right can you speak a little bit to that just two minutes because we need really need to round up now please Okay, thank before, you. Very before much. before that your goes on, that your hold on one second. So we can Mr. we can establish a connection, a connection. Yeah. Yes. That preamble between the preamble and that exclusive list, and a few other things in between. Mm -hmm. Everything that preamble that says we the people solemnly mm -hmm. resolve to live in unity, is saying that we the Yoruba people, mm -hmm. having. Having discussed with the Jordi Ogoni, the Fulani, the Tiv, the Bero, the Ibo, have chosen to submit our lands and our people into this union. Then it goes further than to say, we do hereby make and give unto ourselves the following constitution. So we are now defining how we want to live in that union. So every single provision 
in that constitution is taking its roots from that foundational agreement that Yoruba had decided to submit itself, that the Ijo had decided to submit itself and its oil and gas assets to Jigawa to own everything you see in the constitution. So that is one part. And that, that, uh, that exclusive list in which no matter how well-intentioned you are, you are not going to be able to do anything that that constitution does not permit. So if Fulani people from Senegal and Mali and wherever turn up at your doorstep in Ibarakwa, in Abeokuta, yeah. that constitution says you agree not to carry arms. Absolutely. That is what that exclusive list means because taking it from that preamble that we all agree to live like this according to the, these rules that we are making by ourselves. So yep. it, is it Yoruba that agreed to submit themselves to Nigeria that will be governed by the Fulani in this manner in which mm -hmm. they can be killed at will at the pleasure of the Fulani? Is it the job that submitted their oil and gas to be owned mm -hmm. by people in Jigawa and for a job to be killed at will by people from Sokoto in their ancestral homes in that mm -hmm. manner? So let us understand it clearly that if we do not see the connection between what is contained in that constitution and what is happening to us, we are going to continue to renew that constitution by the foolishness of thinking that the election will bring a taller person to come and you can't stretch water with basket. That constitution mm -hmm. is like the basket they used to bring tomato from Joss. Can anybody fetch water with it? Buhari is tall. Can he fetch water with basket? No. Ungige is short. If you want to be president, can he fetch water with basket? No. No matter who you bring. Babangida was there, he failed. Everybody that came failed because the constitution set the rules. And it is alleged that we, the people, agree to it. We are only now taking action to say we never did. That's what this constitutional force majeure is all about. Young people, hear it now. Your future has been mortgaged sold by people who go to collect 50, 60 million every month. It is not by bringing some of you to come and join them that will solve the problem. This mm -hmm. message goes directly to people like Showare. By mm -hmm. what constitution are you going to govern if yeah. you do not settle the question of constitution before going to election? Let all everybody stop those who are trying to drag them to election as people who want to drag them to death. Mm -hmm. There you can go out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Mm -hmm. Carry okay, on, Dario. Okay, so, okay, so uh, exactly that's exactly what, what I'm trying to say. Um, I think that I'm a very practical person, so let me see, let me give you some snippets from my mind. Um, I think that uh, is there a way to the 68 exclusive list? Is there a way to present it in something fancy like a card or something on social media such that um, mm -hmm. it can be summarized and then people can check it? Uh, because an average youth, I post a lot of uh, information on scholarship. If I post a lot, my, my guys will not read it. But if it is short, mm. they will mm -hmm. read it and comment. So I have an yes. idea. Is there a way we can just present the 68 exclusive list and um, put it on social media in, in snippets, just one, two, three lines, just put it there on first day, second day, third day, fourth day, just put it like that. And then let people decide for themselves and then put the links from the Nigerian government website, it's not from any private website, such that they may say that it can, it can be manipulated. I'm speaking mm. as a youth, I'm thinking, I'm speaking from what we youth think. So That's if brilliant. that can be done from the Nigerian government website, those 68 exclusive lists, put it in something so fancy and put it on social media, let Nigerians see and let them join for themselves, simple. Mm. Is this thing making sense? I assure you, I assure you, Dayo. I assure you, Dayo, that that will be done within one week from today. Okay, thank you very Just much. Just the that's specifics, the specifics those from, that, the... from that preamble, you, yes. you, you will be shocked. You will be shocked at what you have in black and white. Dayo, mm -hmm. are you aware that the government of Nigeria does not owe you any obligations at all, including for welfare, including for security, including for education? Including for Eka, in black and white, there's Absolutely. a section, section six, subsection six C, absolve the government of all obligations towards you. Mm. 
The appropriation provisions give them the spare key to the treasury to take everything in the treasury and do mm. with it whatever they like. You can't question them with the with the with the blanket immunity they have in section 308. Challenge mm. all the lawyers you see. Ask them whether under section six, subsection six C, the government owes you any obligation at all. So if they do not owe you any obligation, why are people going about talking about what government must do when the constitution absolves them of obligations in black and white? Section mm -hmm. six, subsection six C. All the things that accrue to you as a Nigerian is in chapter two. Yeah. Your right to this, your benefits of that, everything that goes to you as under the social contract that the constitution is, is liquidated nullified by that exactly. section six, subsection 60. Young mm -hmm. people challenge the lawyers, especially the noisy ones that go about telling you how they can, how, how things can turn better. Ask them whether this, the government owes you any obligation under that mm -hmm. section six, subsection 60 that suspends, that, that nullifies the entire chapter two. Every good thing of life is listed for you, equal treatment. Equal exactly. opportunity, right exactly. to welfare. You see, exactly. some senior advocates go to TV to say the primary function of government is uh, right uh, is uh, is uh, welfare and security of the citizen. They won't tell you. They won't tell you that that same constitution in section six, subsection six C, nullified the entire chapter two. So you do not exactly. you do not you do not have that expectation. They do not owe you the duty of welfare. They do not owe you the duty of security. They do not owe you the duty of equal treatment and all of that. Exactly. That is that just not... at the starting yeah. point. Then the matter of the contents of the treasury, the, the, the corruption we complain about, Section 81 says that the president must go to National Assembly. I'm, give, I'm being specific now. You can ask the lawyers, anybody who tells you anything different, Call them out so that we can disgrace them on national TV. It doesn't matter whether they are professors of law. It doesn't matter whether they are senior advocates. It doesn't matter whether they are justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. All of them and all of those who swear to defend and uphold that constitution, but who do not care about what is written in the document they swear to defend and uphold, document that bring death to their, to their constituents because mm. it gives them money. You see where yeah. the problem is? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, right. so that, that, that's okay. exactly so what I'm saying. Wrap up, please. Wrap it up, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to wrap up. So I'm just bringing Thank practical you. solutions to it. Yes. Let people know, um, let people know exactly the nitty gritty of the um, 68 um, exclusive list and some summaries in the in constitutions. If youth are exposed to these things, nobody will tell us to know what mm -hmm. to do. When the answers came, it was clear that police brutality is getting too much. People were dying. So it was clear. The youth are being affected. So in inadvertently, we are able to just bring ourselves up and then we're able to do something. So youth do not need people to say, do this, do this. No. Just give us, open up the secrets to us. Just leave everything to us. It's as simple as that. That's right. That's the way to get okay. the minds of you. Quickly, I want to quickly say something before, you know, before I come back to you, Dio. Um, there's not now I know why you are a PhD scholar. Oh my goodness, that is brilliant. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is absolutely brilliant because this, and, and when you say, you know, we, you are part of us now, I hope you know that, but we will have that discussion after this uh, program. Uh, we need to mobilize. You and I need to come together. We need to talk. We are part of the Alliance. We're part of Nina's. We are part of the Lower Niger Congress. This is our future. Because all these politicians and all these people that are like Mu and Lua dragging us to the election, their children are abroad. Let it be known today that their children are abroad. They are not going to be here to face this problem. When they leave everything in rot, we, it, it, we are the ones that suffer it. You know, so as in as much as uh, people are, are hungry right now and they, you know, they, they, they want a quick fix. 10,000 Naira here, 20,000, 500,000 or all. Like it, we finish. We are talking about a situation whereby we can stand together as a, as a nation, ha, ha, owning the, the, the resources of our land to be able to make our place inhabitable. How can Nigeria, with all the wealth of knowledge, 
with all the resources, be cap poverty capital of the world. It's <laughs> shameful. It is shameful. We need to come out and say this. We need to use the power of social media. We need to start to say this. So I, I really love, I wanted to just make that point out, Dio, that I really uh, you know, appreciate that point that uh, we, can't, we can't make it so bigger because you know, we have to break it down little by little, you, use it in uh, like snippets, bring it out every day, post this. This is you know, the 68 item list and let people know. And like you said, the youth are too smart. Look at what they did. In, in how many days they brought down uh, Adamu Garba's uh, 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 app after they banned Twitter and he tried to impose that app on us, right? So we, we, the youth have the power. They are very smart people. They are, we are they're very resourceful. They just need to be guided. They just need to know what direction are we going and then let's run with it. So I just wanted to you know, quickly chip that in uh, right, uh, right there. Um, this is it. We're rounding up, guys. We have been on this for over uh, an hour. It's been so beautiful. I just want one last word from everyone. And I will start with you, Dio, because we're already there. And then I will move to Mr. Tony Nadi. And then last last word person would be um, Dr. Irani. I had seen somebody raise a hand up, uh, had questions, but I don't see that hand raised anymore. I wanted to take a question. Um, there was one here on my Instagram. There's a couple, but I can only take one now because of time. It says, what other measures are you going, are we going to take to make sure that the youth are properly guided and not bribed by any political party? Dio just answered that question. That's it. I feel like that's the answer to that question already. We have to bring, break it down to let people know uh, that this is the problem. Uh, you know, honing in on the 68 item exclusive list. Bring, break it down, use our social media powers, spread this message, let it go like wildfire. The way NSAS, uh, you know, happened, it was just here and there little by little. So that when we march, when we are on the streets, when we're out there protesting, uh, peacefully protesting or at a rally, we know what we are saying. We are saying we are done with this. The constitution, we have brought it down, but we need to enforce that by not going into 2023 elections. And that should be on the mouth of everyone, every youth within the Ninas Alliance. So Dayo, one last word from you, please. And I move to Mr. Tony Nadi, and then I move to Dr. Rania so we can wrap this up. Uh, we will be, this, this is not a one-time uh, show. We are here on Voli Media, uh, but uh, you know, we will be broadcasting for now. We're starting off with three days a week and uh, hopefully we will get that increased as time goes on. So there will be another broadcast uh, by, by um, one of us on Sunday. There'll be another one on Wednesday. And then by God's grace, I'll be back here again on Friday and we will continue to talk about this, to dive deep, to answer your questions because this is our voice. This is the voice of the ethnic nationalities. It's not a, a, an Akuche show. It's not a Mr. Nadi show. It's for all of us. We come out together and we speak and, and, and uh, go, because God has given us the mandate and by his will and by his grace, we will achieve our freedom. So one last word, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oludayo, please okay, take it you. away. Just under one minute, please. Thank yeah, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I just posted something on Twitter now while we were talking, I said, uh, recently, I'm taking my time to read Nigerian constitution, looking at what Nigeria is currently going through. I now see clearly that the problem, restructuring cannot solve it. Look at what the youth are saying. Somebody said that um, any soft copy for us here, yeah. somebody mm. said I would definitely like to peruse it. Sir, if you have any soft copy for us, could you please send it to me? You see the problem I'm saying? Mm. If you tell a youth something, he will not find it. He will not. Mm -hmm. I am a youth, so I know I just did test now. I said something and I tested it now on, online on Twitter. People mm -hmm. will not read. But if you put it small, small like this and you say and yeah. you put caption, they will read, they will react to it. Oh, and by the way, I just want to say that uh, I just want to say that Oludayo has about 37,000 Twitter followers. That is the power now. We we have the power. And we we started by you see, you just did a tweet on that second. People, that is the power of social media. We need to utilize that. Let me take it back to you, please. Exactly. So that, that's what I'm trying to say. That, that's point number one. Point number two is, um, um, please, when we should be able to... Uh, the, the only problem I have with Inamdikano is that um, I don't like the method he's using. I mm -hmm. like his idea. I like his mindset. But I don't like the method. Honestly, I also want, be, I want Biafra to go. I'm a Yoruba person. I know what happened to Biafra. 
but I don't like the way Namdi Kanu. So we have to be very careful not to present this um, association as something that um, you want to go, something I want to go against against the government or something. Because most youth will not, most youth will not understand. Uh, Doctor uh, Mr. Tony Nandi, I, I watched about four or five of your videos, and that's why I'm here because I now realize exactly what you are talking about. You said something. You said that um, uh, what you are telling the government is that the government should still retain the constitution, but sit down at the table and then look at what you are talking about. That's a very smart idea. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody just wants to scatter it. We want to scatter everything. But I like the idea you said. We are not saying that this thing should go. We are saying that still opposed to what you are doing, but let's look at this thing. It's not working. Irrespective of whoever comes to the government, it will not work, irrespective of our prayers. So that's okay. why I'm joining. That's why I'm, I like this idea. This is an entirely new idea for me, an idea that will not destroy the existing structure, but is bringing something to the table. And we are not involving fight. We are not doing anything against the existing constitution. And that's why I like this group. That's perfect. So I commend uh, this group. Um, I've been looking for an association like this where people can do things the we right way. We are a ways. movement. Yes, we are a movement. We, you know, it's it's it not so much as a, an association. We're a movement. And, uh, you oh, know, okay. I know that we're still learning. You know, this was very, very uh, last minute. You're still learning a lot about, you know, what yeah. we stand for and, and who we are. And, um, I, and you and I will speak a little bit more more about that and, and how you know everything came about where we are where we're going and I know you already have a little bit of uh, insight towards that but I just want to let you know that you know um, from something that you said now the constitution we know that that's the source of our problem right and we are pulling pulling it down we've already done that by the declaration of the constitutional force majeure and what we're now saying to the federal government is come and sit down with us and let us draft, you know, let us come at like the transitioning, right? Because we, you know, like Mr. Tony said, we're not anarchists. We're not saying that, you know, everything is just gonna happen overnight. Fine, you know, uh, Buhari and the, the rest of them, they can leave out this tenure, but we're saying that at the end of it, it is done. Let us start now to sit down so that there can be a smooth transitioning because if we don't talk about it now if we don't try to resolve it now like human beings and civilized people the matter will resolve itself on the streets that's what we're saying so um i, I just want to I, I think i just i think i'm going to hang it there for, for you know with everything you've said tony i'm um, sorry anything you said dio ludio i really appreciate you coming on it was so last minute for you to come on board and you did you, you sacrificed your time and you came on board and you're already giving us such insightful and brilliant ways of how we're going to reach the youth and i really appreciate you for that and i will reach out to you uh, in a little while and then we can we can go further so thank you so much for being here i just want to move quickly to mr nadi for one final word and then I, we will move to dr ranya and we will round up thank you so much Obadiah. yeah thank you uh the matter is quite simple straightforward we have like doctors <laughs> will do the diagnosis of the ailment of Nigeria right now is unworkable constitutional arrangement. Mm. The prescription is take down the 1999 constitution and end the unitary union of death. Mm -hmm. The treatment, stop the renewal. Let, let, let those who want to drag us to election be stopped by anybody who can stop them. If you're not stopping them, they are taking you straight to the slaughter. That's Those right. who impose that constitution are already upon us, trying to take our lands, trying to kill everybody who owned it before. And Fulani from Senegal and uh, Bali and everywhere, our borders have been thrown open. If anybody doesn't understand that, everything is deception. They are intent. They are bent on taking your land and killing you off. That constitution is the mechanism by which they are able to do that. The owners of the land must stand up now and say, our signature cannot be used to give life for a doc to the document of our damnation. And so going to the transition we're talking about, we're saying like South Africa did with apartheid constitution, they solved the same problem we're trying to solve now by going into a transition. In 1990, a president elected under that constitution made an announcement, Frederick de Klerk says, we can't go any further with this constitution that has brought our society to ruins. 
Nigeria is under ruins now because of that constitution. Anybody who has ever sworn to defend and uphold that constitution is the enemy we are looking for. Anybody who is, let us assume that they were ignorant before now. Anybody who is prepared to swear to defend and uphold our constitution is the enemy that we must pursue right now. And we're not talking about boycott. We're saying right now, the political parties that are calling us to come and join them, Yahaya Bello and lunatics like him, mm -hmm. let the young people ask him, by which constitution are you going to govern? How are you going to get us electricity with this exclusive list? How are you going to get us equal treatment with this quota system? How are you going to get us the people that say they are fed up with Nigeria, the ones who want Biafra, the ones who want Odua Republic, you say that they submitted themselves into the union. They are saying, we have not met. We have not done any such thing. You don't want to call a meeting at which they can begin to agree to remain in union. And you want to drag them, you know, to say the, that Nigeria is uh, non-negotiable, indissoluble. Who told you there is something called the right to self-determination? The, right. the rights are available to us. This constitution was imposed in negation of our right to self-determination. And All so right. the, the, the remedy available to the Yoruba today, the remedy available to the Jot today, the remedy available to the Igbo today is called self-determination. Whether they want 100% yes. of autonomy should be matter for referendum. Whether they're yes. satisfied with 80% autonomy in which they're talking about confederation is matter for referendum. But all of those who are, who are dissatisfied with what Nigeria is for today, whether they are only looking for good governance or rule of law, or even uh, uh, what is it called, uh, resource control or restructuring or Odua or you know Biafra, everything begins with taking the constitution that locked them down into this union out of the way. We go into transition, we're not anarchists, we say, we offer a transition that accommodates existing governance structure. So we don't go to Somalia because we are running away from Nigeria. <laughs> Let us seize the opportunity and solve this problem. Because if we don't, those who are choking do not owe anybody any particular good behavior. They are going to do whatever. And when I mean whatever I mean, when I say whatever I mean, whatever, to get themselves out of the union that is now, that is surely a union of death for them. A union of backwardness, a union of attrition. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you so much, Mr. Nadi. Thank you. We will we'll leave it there and we'll move to uh, Dr. Rania. Please, one last word for everyone watching you from all over the world, uh, the youth, the 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 you know fellow members of the Ninas Alliance. Um, what word are you going to leave us with today that would resonate with us as we are moving closer? to our freedom from Nigeria. Please take it away, Dr. Rania. Thank you very much again. I uh, appreciate you having me on this platform. Um, let me say one thing before the final word. And that one thing I want to say is this. If you are watching me anywhere you are in the world, either uh, live or even after the program, just go to section 215 subsection 4. I repeat, section 215, subsection 4. What that section says is that your governor, I'm say, why I'm saying this is because we are, at least we belong to a particular state. I am according to state. You have somebody else from maybe Anamba, Oshun, uh, or your uh, Ebony, like that. What the section is saying that your governor cannot give any directive to any police officer, and that police officer will obey without going back to take approval from Abuja, mm. from the general of police or the president. Why am I saying this? Is that there is nothing your governor can do. Your governor cannot do, cannot help you security work. So having said that, let me say the final word I have for our people. Dear youth, my dear youth, listen to what I'm going to say now. The life of the Constitution 
the union of Nigeria, every time there is a federal election, you cannot, if you are from Odidua or the, the Southwest, Odidua nation can never be realized as long as the 1999 constitution is in existence. If you are fighting for Biafra, as long as the 1999 constitution is in existence, Biafra is an impossibility because of section two, subsection Y of the constitution. If you are from Niger Delta or from the Middle Belt, you can never realize your dream nation as long as the 1999 constitution is in existence. And what keeps the 1999 constitution in existence is election. As long as there is election coming up and that election holds, the constitution is renewed. In, 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 uh, in uh, 2003, the constitution was renewed. In 2007, it was renewed. In 2011, it was renewed. In 2015, it was renewed. And just two years ago, in 2019, it was renewed. Will you allow the constitution to be renewed again in 2023, just because Kingsley Moralo is telling you that he will do better. Mm. It's a question for you to meditate upon. I leave it here. Thank you very much, Dr. Irania. Again, I'm uh, really appreciative of you taking your time to come out here on this program and explain to us, explain to the youth, explain to the people uh, why we need to close shop now. Parties need to close shop now uh, we, we cannot afford to move to 2023 elections within our alliance. Uh, uh, you, you, you've seen by now, people have seen that even in the, Euro, the Yoruba or Dua Republic, they are saying no elections in, in, in 2023 in our, in, our, in our land. So we need to follow, follow suit. We need to mobilize uh, grassroots mobilization for the layman that doesn't understand what is this thing about this constitution? Why, uh, why, are we, why are we saying that this constitution is bad or why do we not need to go into 2023? Because we are renewing our slavery to a union that uh, a, uni a unitary uh, system of government, a union that has no regard for us that are killing us in our ancestral land, have taken all, away all our resources and are not able, we are not able now to fend for ourselves. There's no security. We are seeing all the insecurities around uh, different areas. We are seeing that. So we are calling everyone to join NINAS, join the NINAS Alliance. Come, let us come together because only when we come together is when we can achieve, we can move forward. We can, you know, this freedom is so close. I say to people, I can almost touch it. We are so close now. We need everyone, especially the youth. This message today is, is, is more geared towards the youth because we are normally the, you know, mostly the instruments that these political parties use when they want to, you know, come for another election. But then, you know, I, that there were some uh, uh, short videos going around recently where politicians, you know, they, you see them during the uh, election or election period, they buy a corn from a corn seller, they sit down with a corn seller, but after that, you don't see them anymore. This is exactly what we are saying. If we have, if we, you know, the only card they have left to play is the 2023 election. That's it. They know their time is up. That's why you're hearing all this, you know, uh, let us uh, come together, let us restructure. No, we're saying no, you cannot you cannot renovate a house if the foundation is destroyed. The foundation of Nigeria is not standing and it is destroyed because they, they lied on a document and said, we the people, we did not sign to be enslaved. So the earlier we get this message, the earlier we spread this message of, of hope, of, of, tr of truth to everyone, the, the, the closer we will get to our, our destination, which is uh, uh, you know freedom from Nigeria. And you can get more information from our websites, www.freedomfromnigeria.com and ninasffn.org. 
all all the information that you you that you seek will be on there. I just want to thank you all so much, everyone who joined us from all over the world uh, on my Instagram live at Ayamakuche, uh, on on our Facebook Voli Media Facebook uh, Voli Media uh, YouTube, and on the Zoom. I thank my special guests. I thank Mr. Tony Nadi. I thank Dr. Rania, and I thank Oludayo Shokumbi for their time coming on here and enlightening us on uh, what we need to do and the, and the steps. Like I said, this is not a one-off program. We are here on Volley Media. We are the voice of the Lower Niger Congress. We will be here uh, on Sunday. Our next broadcast will be on Sunday, June 20th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Homeland time. We encourage you all to keep this conversation alive by following us on all our social media platforms uh, and keep and spreading this message of hope, the message of trust, and the message of truth. Thank you again for being with us. God bless you and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.